What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, Tuesday evening, December 8th. 2020 is the date, 8.37 p.m. West Coast time, where the latest quake here on the globe is a 4.4 earthquake striking out there around the South America area. Right around uh, just about south of the Chile area. Right around in the vicinity. whole lot of earthquake activity out here on the Earthquake 3D globe today. Over the last 24 hours, some uh, significant movement throughout North America, in the parts of Mexico, and into South America as well. This activity continuing uh, tonight, obviously, with that 4.4 that just struck there. Not much, uh, can't really say so for this part of the world over here. Still pretty quiet. It's hung up out here. Um, there's, there's an area, if we go back for the past couple days here, uh, there's an area, and this is over the past three days or so, and this is not major movement. We can bring this uh, the magnitudes down here. You can see just a couple five-pointers out here. we got to look at the scale here on the Earthquake 3D globe where we're not seeing significant movement out here in the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. That's uh, where we're probably expecting our next big earthquake out there. I'm guessing somewhere around Japan area, north of Japan. Or potentially up north of the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, that's a uh, complete guess at the moment, but looking at the absence of earthquake activity out there, uh, it's just it's looking more and more likely. Uh, so let's bring this back down to the last 24 hours. Okay, let's go over here and take a look at the activity taking place on the uh, flat scale Earth model here from the USGS folks there. The whoa, hold on one second here. Okay, that was kind of odd. Not for sure what happened. But there we go. Uh, these guys are honest folks, right? The USGS. They wouldn't lie. They don't cover up earthquakes. Hold on. So I forgot to plug back in my headphones there. Uh, that's just a... It looks like just a 4.4 that's popping up there in South America. So... Getting back to the USGS, these guys would never lie. They're honest. They always, you know, uh, do what they're supposed to do, right? Well, I uh, I kind of have to call them out. There was a 4.1 earthquake off the coast of Northern California earlier today. And in fact, I still have the page open up from when I clicked on that earthquake right here. 4.1, 158 kilometers west-southwest of Ferndale. Some folks started re reporting it. i seen this earthquake come in there. That's kind of why I clicked on it. At the time, the review status was, was automatic. The depth was at 8 kilometers. And uh, struck out there in the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast there. But that 4.1 completely got downgraded to a very, very small earthquake. 2.9 to be exact. You guys see that uh, timestamp right there on the UTC? 1950-55. 1950-36. So a little bit of time difference, but I don't think that really matters. This is the same earthquake, or at least the same event that happened. 4.1. Originally, I believe, a 4.4. Got downgraded to a 4.1 and then ultimately downgraded to a 2.9. Yay. I mean, what are they thinking? What's going on here? Is their equipment that haywired that they don't know the magnitude of their quakes out there? Something odd is going on out there, folks, with this earthquake downgrading and uh, error reporting. And this is just the first of what I have to mention uh, when it comes to some odd activity going on. We'll, we'll talk about Mount, Mount uh, St. Helens and Yellowstone here in a minute. But earlier in the day, and you can see the timestamp here, 1642, there was a 2.7. That's this earthquake right here. The 2.9, okay. Originally a 4.4, 4.1 was sitting right off the coast right here, right around this area. I don't believe it. Well, you can see it somewhat on this map right here. 
see that star indicating that 4.1 that originally struck and that's in the area of uh well it's sitting off here right around this area this triple point, point junction right here the gorda escarpment area um but i just find it very strange that they would downgrade it so much to a 2.9 i can understand okay a 4.4 yeah, it's a little bit stronger than, or it's a little bit weaker than our instruments are showing. So, yeah, we'll downgrade it to a 4.1. But to a 2.9? I don't know. There's a couple reasons behind that, potentially. Could have to do with the depth of the, these earthquakes here. And this is kind of concerning here because we're looking down there into the uh, deeper part of the Cascadia subduction zone with these two specific earthquakes right here. These right here uh, could be... Uh, some troubling sig signatures here. Um, so yeah, the error in question, the 4.4, 4.1 earthquake being downgraded to a 2.9 could have something to do with the depth, the depth of these earthquakes here. 8.0 kilometer, or 8 point, yeah, 8 kilometers below the surface was originally specified for that 4.1, but once it got downgraded multiple times there we're looking at 19 kilometers uh, below the surface there to a 2.9 magnitude quake here let's see if anybody reported filling that we still have one uh, we got one report it's kind of odd a little bit on the odd side here this review static automatic so that's kind of uh wow well, just some weird stuff going on, folks. I don't even know what to say about these guys here. Let's see how much further I can go back before I lose this page. But I wanted to keep this page up to show you guys that this earthquake was not my figment of my imagination. It happened. Okay, I can't go back any further. But I do know if I go to the current earthquake maps, it will update with the latest um, downgrade on it. see here Let's see if we can find out waveforms this well I don't want to go into uh, a whole bunch of digging out here but anyway it is what it is I mean when earthquakes pop up like that it's just it's it blows me away that they downgrade it so much some earthquake activity out around Chester Lake Almanor area. In fact, directly under Lake Almanor. A couple microquakes there, but if you look at the magnitudes there, they're all 1.0. And they all struck roughly about, oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes within within each other there. A little bit strange um, for, the, for the exact same magnitude there. I'm, I don't know what's going on there. There is Mount Lassen that sits up here to the northwest. No activity there to report, according to the folks at the USGS. Um, and far as Southern California goes, we're looking at pretty, uh, pretty much uh, regular activity out there. No swarming to report. There is a little bit of uh, activity around the San Jacinto Fault area that we have seen qu quite often. Yorba Linda has seen a couple small microquakes in Chino Valley area as well, but uh, no mega quake to report yet in that area. But no doubt. A mega quake will be coming to your region pretty soon. How soon? Who knows? Uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest, Mount St. Helens. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick here. These folks are not showing any type of earthquake activity out there around Mount St. Helens. And in fact, last night when I was watching the seismograph station of Mount St. Helens, the live data coming in, I seen a couple small earthquakes pop off there. And the data stations that I had were right around the summit area. So in order to see the seismograph stations there, we have to go into the PNSN network here, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Trimmer real quick, folks. Let me show you just real quick. Six epicenters, okay? So not a whole lot there on that map. Uh, let's go over here to Mount St. Helens. And you can see the overview here of the stations. These are stations right here. Seismograph stations. No earthquake activity. Well, it looks like you see last two weeks right there, okay? 
a couple small yellow dots here right around the summit. But we're not talking about those earthquakes here. I want to see the activity that took place last night. So when I go to view on a couple of these, certain ones are not showing up. I'll click on this other one here. Give it a second. This here is recent activity, so we need to go back to the previous day. And uh, there's some there's some small quakes popping off there, but this data, it's hard to tell exactly how sensitive this data equipment is. I'll show you another one here. I've got to go back to previous day once again. Some of this data is missing right there, right around the uh, uh, 2100 and 2300 hour of, uh, looks like, UTC time. A couple of these stations are data squashed. And by data squashed, I mean, let me, well, let me show you exactly what I mean here. So data sensitivity you can see the thickness of these red black blue lines here indicating data coming in okay even down here some good some data coming in but for some reason right around that 2100 hour things get interesting you can see the 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 data chart here get pulled off off of the data stations here the seismograph stations and then ultimately come back online squashed and by squashed, I mean nothing. Either this is nothing or the sensitivity is set so high to where even a volcanic eruption would not even register on this seismograph station. The sensitivity is off the chart here. And I'm not for sure exactly why they're doing that. But I cannot find the earthquakes that I was seeing specifically on the... Uh, Mount St. Helens seismograph station last night. Hold on a second here. And you can see that error show up as well on this station. Not for sure what this is. I don't believe that's an earthquake. Um, these little small spikes are probably earthquakes here. But it was a little bit larger than that, what I seen pop off. So some some weird data manipulation going on folks not only with the usgs but i believe the pnsn network up there as well uh and not to mention yellowstone uh a yellowstone overview that i use of the seismograph stations it's called is this thing on.org the entire network of is this thing on.org is down completely so i don't know if the guy forgot to pay his bill his internet bill his website domain bill, I don't know. But it's non-functional. So in order to see anything that's going on at uh, Yellowstone National Park, we have to go over here to the University of Utah and check out their seismograph stations here. And this data right here, you can see like Yellowstone here. Most of this is older earthquake activity from a couple days ago. Uh, it says the last two weeks here. We've seen that little swarming activity pop off underneath uh, Yellowstone Lake. But over here to the west, we're seeing a new swarm pop off uh, over the last two days or so. Just to the west of Yellowstone Lake there. And um, in order to see this activity, we need to pop up the seismograph stations here. which is viewed on a different map, uh, but it's, you know, it takes a little bit longer to see these, see the data that's going on here in Yellowstone, but so, okay, so there we go. Last 24 hours, looks like about 24 hours or so on this data station there. You can see the swarming still going on. Not as intense, but none, nonetheless here, these earthquakes are uh, 
definitely uh, taking place here. This is not interference. These are earthquakes roughly around, I'm guessing right around the 1.5 to 2.0 range there in Yellowstone National Park. It looks like near Little Thumb Creek, at least on that station. Here's another seismograph station here. Picking up those earthquakes that struck in the distance, but it, it's hard to tell, folks, with the sensitivity on these, if they are squashed or not. That's kind of why I like the overview that we were looking at on the uh, on that one regional website, uh, which is down now, but you can see those right there popping off to you. I'm hoping that the uh, person that owns that domain is uh, able to get that website up and going. See this station right here is almost completely squashed. Barely picked up any of those earthquakes that struck just to the north by a couple miles. So uh, yeah, just some oddball stuff going on here, folks. I mean, I don't even know what to what to expect anymore, what to believe. I mean, data manipulation to the public is very common. Uh, it's just, you know, what do we need to know? Why do we need to know what's going on here on the Earth, right? That's kind of why I run live seismograph stations, because they really can't lie about the data. They, I, In fact, one time, one time when I was running live seismograph stations, the time switched. Like, the time from the seismograph station viewer on my live stream was like six or seven hours behind and I've never seen that happen I don't know how the heck they manipulated that but it happened and uh, it was kind of odd so I'm very cautious of my uh, live stations coming in there I double check the time make sure that they're uh, lined up with, with the current UTC time a little bit of earthquake activity along the Grand Teton area, Montana or Wyoming area, Idaho. You can see that linear line that's showing up there. We've seen this, uh, oh, a couple weeks ago as well. Utah seen earthquake activity today. Uh, 3.7. Where'd that 3.7 go? Is that this one down here? I guess it is. Kind of out of the, uh, out of spec, if you will from the normal linear activity. This one's striking pretty shallow, 0.4 kilometers. Near, it looks like LaSalle, Utah. A couple folks did report filling it. Uh, far as the interactive map goes. Well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, pop-up historical activity here. At least back to uh, what 1900 or so. I don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity for this general area. Not saying there hasn't been any, but uh, on the USGS map, they're not showing it. It has been reviewed, and uh, like I say, it's a pretty shallow earthquake out there. Uh, let's see here. Idaho still seeing some activity. Not like I say, not a whole lot to report out here aside from this, you know, this weird stuff going on out there, right up against the Rocky Rocky Mountain area. Kansas did see a little shaker out there, three pointer. I think that was originally a three point seven or so. Got downgraded once again. <clears throat> and uh, there's the quiet spell out there along the. Aleutian Trench area through Japan. I mean, this is very quiet. We've seen more activity out here over the past couple days in this general area <clears throat> than we have over here, and that's that's pretty odd. So something is stuck. Something is uh, definitely uh, waiting to build up just a little bit more before it pops there, folks. So I believe we're going to see a definite increase here in the larger magnitudes pretty soon. The activity in South America is still kind of moderate. Like I mentioned, that 4.4 is striking there near Chile. The latest quake on the globe. As uh, far as solar activity goes, we are expecting potential for a solar storm 
uh, on the 10th, which is uh, not tomorrow. Right, tomorrow is the uh, Wednesday, December 9th, December 10th on the uh, on Thursday. Looking at the uh, G3 potential there because of a CME. See that the forecast: the geomagnetic field is expected to be primarily prim primarily quiet on December 9th tomorrow until the CME coronal mass ejection arrives late in the UT day. Initial response from the CME is expected to be unimpressive with peak storm potential at or below G1. Uh, December 10th is anticipated to see the greatest disturbance from the CME if the BZ is sustained at negative for long enough and if total strength is significant. If so, as high as a G3 strong storm could occur. Peak of G2 moderate is possible on December 11th, especially in the overnight for the North American periods here. So we're talking about potential auroras kicking down here. We'll have to take a look and see what the uh, how this affects or how the uh, magnetic field of the Earth um, accepts this CME. Um, it has been somewhat uh, weak, I guess, if you will, you know, due to the lack of solar activity on the sun. But the uh, the field is still there, obviously. Uh, visible auroras will be likely from middle to high latitudes. But uh, we'll have to take a look at that, depending on uh, how how strong it uh, kicks, how how strong the uh, CME is once it hits the Earth area. Uh, and that was come kind of coming from AR twenty seven ninety, which is a sunspot out there. That happened a couple days ago. It does take a couple days to get to Earth. Uh, I'm trying to find that movie there where there's a CME. You can kind of see that. A little coronal mass ejection there of charged particles and whatnot. Is this the one that's got the? Uh, yeah, you can see it kind of, kind of a little bit better here in this stereo image here. Looks pretty massive, but it's not a huge one. It's really not. It's kind of a. It's it's a good sized one, but we definitely had, have seen bigger ones in the past. Uh, when the sun was much uh, much more active, but this is again obviously a uptick in the solar activity uh, where the sun is kind of coming back to life, you know, kind of shooting off some solar flares and uh, CMEs and and all sorts of stuff. Whether this plays a part in earthquake activity in the next couple days or not, we'll we'll have to see how it plays in part there. So tomorrow will probably be a little bit better story as far as uh, the potential storm in the Earth's uh, magnetic field. Right now these are kind of looking a little weak, folks. These are not the sunspots right here. Not anything to worry about. In fact, the, the solar flare threat at the moment is only at a 15% threat level for a C flare. Uh, pretty non-existent for anything above that. But uh, once this, uh, tell you what, once we start seeing that solar flare with the uh, CME start hitting the atmosphere, we'll see these things rise up. And uh, also down here on the, uh, on the, uh, what the heck happened there? On the charts there pop up as well on these graphs here. So uh, let's see what else do we got to cover, folks. I think that was about it. Just a whole lot of uh, downgrading, a whole lot of station manipulation. Not a whole lot of movement out there in the New Zealand area either. This is kind of a cool website to check out. I didn't know there's any slow slip event movement out there. I'm going to have to go back and check out uh, all this stuff here that this page has to offer. A lot of, uh, a lot of cool information and uh, category stuff that might uh, be of interest to people that like earthquakes out there geonet.org.nz is the website but according to these folks here uh, just a couple small weak earthquakes with the vicinity over here taking place 
over the past 24 hours or so. Not a whole lot of movement. Looks like maybe a 4.5 there uh, on December 7th, a couple days ago. So, anyway, folks, we are going to jump off here for a little bit and. Uh, live stream is up and running i did lose the internet there for a little bit a brief period but since then we are back up and running and uh hopefully we'll stay that way have a good night guys we'll chat you guys another time stay safe